Hey, welcome in and welcome back. This is Name Brand Radio. I am sorry that I was gone for a little bit. Uh, I got married, not last week, but the week before. So it was kind of stressful leading up to that. And of course, if you've ever been married, you know, that day you're running all over the place. You got your boys next to you. You're celebrating before, during, and after. It was a wild experience. It was so fun. I wish I could relive that day. It, it was a blast. And uh, as soon as the wedding was over, I flew to Cancun, had a week out in Mexico for my honeymoon. Wish I was there, dude. Just seeing the beach, the white sand, the endless drinks and food. It was awesome. Cancun, Mexico, 2021. Never forget. But... Let's move on to the podcast. So today I'm going to be covering all kinds of information. Just sit back, relax, crack open a cold one, and let's get into it, man. First of all, I wanted to do a shout out to my boy Dustin Duffy over there. I was uh, listening to the Squeegee Life podcast the other day, and uh, I was just in the comments kind of kicking back, saying what's up to everybody. And Dustin was in the live chat, and he was like, hey, bro, we need a new name brand radio EP, dog." And so I'm here for the people. I'm here to give what you want. I appreciate that. I've never had anybody request a new episode, so we're getting somewhere, man. We are moving up the food chain. But uh, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, I know I'm going to sound like a broken record. If you haven't subscribed to American Window Cleaner Magazine, Go ahead and get a subscription, dude. I broke it down. I think for a year, it's like $65. It's like $6.95 a month for American Window Cleaner Magazine. You pay it all at at once, of course. But when you break it down, it's like 6 bucks a month, dude. Do you go every morning and get a Red Bull or a Monster from the gas station or eat Taco Bell for lunch? You can afford... American Window Cleaner Magazine. Not only are you supporting a window cleaning company, a window cleaning magazine, but you're going to get so much information in there. I'm telling you, it's so worth it. You get stickers for your buckets. They're giving away shirts, limited edition. You can never get them again. Uh, I know Jersey did a little, uh, I forget what you call it, but like a little page, a little box about storefront routes. And it was inspiring, dude. After I read that, I will never look at storefront routes the same. It was very inspiring. And they're putting in pictures of people from the industry, dude. This is your magazine. You have to look at it that way. If you send in uh, pictures and articles, Jersey's putting it in there for you, dude. I am so happy for my guy, Jersey, just owning the, the, uh, the magazine, owning the podcast, I think it's so cool, and uh, you never know. You may be in an edition of in edition <coughs> of American Window Cleaner Magazine. So go get you one, man. But uh, yeah, s- speaking of the Squeegee Life, uh, they have been killing it these last few episodes, dude. They had Eddie Stewart on there, and if you're not from Texas, you wouldn't understand how crazy it was to have Eddie on the podcast because. I live in Texas, and I'm actually not too far from Eddie. During the Texas freeze, we were out of power for days and days and days. It was like, I think in Houston, it got to seven degrees. I know you Northerners are going to be like, well, man, we're in the negatives all the time every year, bro. I get it, bro, but Houston's not ready for that. We get 105, 110 degrees with heat index, and we're good. Like, we can just go on with daily life. We're pumping AC. It's no big deal. We have never had that kind of weather. When I woke up the day of the freeze, it looked like a winter wonderland. It was insane. There was snow everywhere. And I mean, feet deep. You couldn't see the roads. You couldn't see the grass. And I know... Like, you northerners are like, we'll just get on the road. We don't have salt trucks here, bro. Like, we were not prepared. No one was on the road. I got some crazy pictures. It was insane. But, uh, you know, we were out of water. We were out of power. I could see my breath in my apartment. It was absolutely 
I'll never forget it. But to see Eddie, I know he had no power for a few days, and he somehow got on his phone and got on the Squeegee Life podcast. It was a great episode. Uh, they had Craig Hendenzel on there with the, uh, the little spinny wheel and extravaganza going on. I, I didn't actually get to watch that one. I was on my honeymoon during that, but I heard a lot of people want a, cool, want a bunch of cool stuff, so that's cool. I got to see last night Frank Rave on the podcast. That was an insane, <laughs> insane episode. That was pretty cool. But uh, shout out to Squeegee Life Podcast. You guys are killing it. Mark, Seth, Tim, TJ, keep it going. Uh, I love what you guys are doing. Just kicking back and just talking with a bunch of window cleaners, man. And, you know, the live chat, you know, you can't beat it, dude. You can't beat it. And another podcast I started watching... I've followed uh, Scott Cleans It for a while because I'm in full exterior cleaning and uh, he has a pretty good channel. And it's pretty fun to watch people grow like right before your eyes. I remember when he had like literally like zero subscribers and now he's up to I think 3,500 and uh, he's working with Southeast Softwash and he's doing interviews with people around the country and uh, he had this thing called super chat or something i don't know if tj listens to this podcast but if somebody uh will talk to tj there was this some kind of super chat option where you could pay like five bucks ten bucks twenty bucks uh to just help them help support them and then your comment like went on the screen it was pretty cool uh so you know i know tj usually has in between 20 and 40 viewers every wednesday and if you got the super chat option everybody gives you know five ten bucks I think it would help help him out a lot. But uh, I wanted to give a shout out to the WCR print department. Uh, I personally have never used them, but I've been seeing them more and more. I don't know why I haven't used them. I got my logo from a friend of mine who is in graphic design. He's local. I always like to support small business. And I got my company shirts from a local business. Um, I, I just, I like to shop local, of course, you know, I'm a local window cleaner. I like people to use me, so I like to shop local, but, um, I, they do all kinds of stuff. They do, uh, postcards, yard signs, company shirts, all kinds of stuff. So if you can shop through the WCR print department and another new thing, uh, WCR is doing right now, they got new snapbacks. That is crazy, dude. They look so cool. Um, I like the fitted hat that they shipped to me, but uh, I always wanted a snapback. Personally, I like the Richardson snapbacks a lot better just because it's more of like a working man, curved trucker bill hat, uh, kind of like the Tucker one. If you have a Tucker hat, that's a Richardson hat, uh, but pretty cool. I plan on getting one. Pretty sweet. Uh, and if you didn't know, it's already too late for you to enter by the time you are listening to this, but they are doing another silencer giveaway today. It just ended about 16 minutes ago. So whoever gets that silencer, you are a lucky dude. I cannot believe, I still cannot believe they are giving away zero silencers for literally nothing, dude. It is insane. WCR is killing it. I actually seen uh, Chris put on Facebook that they're hiring in like all positions. So that is really cool. (laughs) I was kind of just joking with him. I was like, man, did everyone quit WCR? They're hiring all positions. But uh, no, they're getting bigger. They're expanding. They're going to become an empire. Uh, You know, the crazy thing is when I was out in Mexico, I was on a resort. And every single day, didn't, didn't matter where I was at, eating at a restaurant, on the beach, uh, at the pool, there was always a window cleaner. They're doing, you know, the suites or there, it was four stories. They were doing kind of like a high rise thing. They're grappling off and mopping and squeegeeing. Uh, and they were doing the restaurants and I would always wear, you know, I brought a few WCR shirts, WCR hoodies, didn't really wear the hoodies cause it was about sunny and 75. Of course, I love Mexico, but, uh, all the workers, when they saw me, they would be like, oh, CCC, your shirt, your shirt, so cool. Uh, and then, like, people at the restaurant, the little hostess and hosts, uh, they would be like, hey, man, I like your shirt. So I don't know if they're ordering through WCR or they just know who they are and appreciate everything that they do for the community. I thought that was pretty cool. You guys are nationwide. 
And um, I did want to briefly touch on Marshall, bro, over at Lakeview Window Cleaning. He just did a black diamond rubber giveaway. I thought that was really cool. I'm sad I didn't win, but uh, I love black diamond. They have an amazing squeegee rubber, especially for the cost, dude. If you're not using black diamond, I don't know what you're doing. They're shipping, if you order Black Diamond at the moment, they're shipping uh, stickers with it. And then the giveaway uh, was a 12-pack of Black Diamond Medium or Hard, or Medium or Soft, and uh, you got a t-shirt with it. I really, really, really want a Black Diamond t-shirt. I think uh, that's the only squeegee rubber I've used for over a year and a half. I used to only use Ettore, and I switched to Black Diamond, and I never looked back. Um it doesn't last as long as Ettore or other squeegee rubber brands, but honestly, you know, it's so cheap. Just change your rubber every day. It's not that big of a deal. And uh, I don't know if you've seen, Jersey is doing a live brand new show directly into the Pro Window Cleaning Forum. I, there's not a date yet. There's not a time yet, but uh, I think that's so cool. Jersey does a lot for the community as well. He's always uploading into WCR Nation on YouTube, and he's a sales rep. So I'm really excited for that new show. Also, he does the American Window Cleaner podcast. So if you like podcasts, you listen to this one, you listen to The Squeegee Life, go ahead and make sure you give your boy Jersey a shout-out, man. Go listen to American Window Cleaner podcast. But uh, for the next episode, I think I'm going to do forum questions uh, I, my, me and my wife were kind of talking back and forth on what we should do for the next show. And she was like, honestly, you should just go through the forum and see what everybody's talking about. See what questions people want answered. And I'll give an answer. Maybe I'll go into the comments and, you know, give some answers from other people, what they're saying. I think it'd be pretty cool. Just kind of spitball back and forth and, uh, get it going. But uh, for today, there was a question in the forum. It wasn't exactly stated like this. I twisted it a little bit. But basically, the question is, if you could tell your old self what you know now, when you first started the business, what would it be? And I think it's a very, very big topic. I think the answers to this question are very relevant right now. Just because in the forum and uh, just on the internet in general, this industry is growing so fast. We are in the baby stages of window cleaning, soft washing, pressure washing. I think in the next 20 years, you're going to have to have a license to do all of this. I think we are basically in the 90s of uh, exterior cleaning. We there, There's so much new technology with water fed. There's so much new technology in soft washing. Uh, the the pumps are getting bigger. The pressure washers are getting bigger. Uh, hold on, I gotta sneeze. <coughs> whew. Oh, sorry, I. Whew. Got me a little bit. Uh, but yeah, we're in the baby stages, man. It's just gonna keep growing and growing and growing. So, if there's any new people out there. I think this will help out a lot. I, I just wrote down a few things that I would want to tell myself when I first started in the industry. And uh, if you have anything else to add, of course, comment down below. And uh, we can start a little thread. And I think the people that are just starting in this industry can get a little bit of knowledge from it. Of course, you always do your own research. Uh, you have to perfect your own craft. I think that's a big thing for me is you, you have to treat this like any other job or any other hobby where it's kind of like, you know, when you first start playing basketball, you're not good. You're not going to make layups. You're not going to make free throws. You're not going to make three-pointers. You have to sit there, get into the gym every single day for hours on end, perfect your craft, and that's how you get better. So with window cleaning and pressure washing and soft washing or whatever, you have to practice. You have to be there day in and day out and try new things to perfect your craft. So whenever you're getting jobs every single day, you're getting two, three jobs every single day, you know what works, you have a system, whenever you pull up, you don't have to ask yourself, what's the game plan? You already know, it's ready to go. But the first thing 
I wrote down for if you could tell your old self what you know now when you first started the business, what would it be? First, I would tell myself, Austin, tools are not the most important thing in this industry. When I first started in this industry, and I actually first started to like what I was doing and really start love what I was doing, I really started to go home and Google and YouTube, just different things about the industry. It's when I first started seeing Luke and Steve-O and all of those other people who were creating content, valuable content to the community. I was so focused on tools. I can, I can remember, just like it was yesterday, uh, the first order I ever put on WCR was an Ettore Super Channel with an Unger 40 degree Ninja handle. And then I had a Ninja T bar and a Mormon sleeve. And I thought that that was just going to change my life. I was going to be the best window cleaner to ever f- step foot on the face of the earth because I saw so many people using the Super Channel. I saw so many people using the Mormon sleeve. And I was like, this is just going to be a breakthrough for me and just going to be awesome. Well, I got the Super Channel, I got everything, and I started doing Windows and I didn't see a difference. I did, like, it wasn't any less detailing for me. It, you know, I didn't have a great technique at that time. And I was just like, wow, this didn't do it. This isn't going to change how I clean windows. And you have to think, yes, tools are important. I don't think you should be going and doing mansions with a Home Depot squeegee and a Home Depot mop and Home Depot towels. I do think you should have quality towels. You should have quality trad equipment and you should have quality water fed. But if you spend all of your time thinking about what's the new technique I can do? What's the new tool? Like what is like basically uh, the new thing right now is the Sorbo Viper channel. I'm sure it's awesome. I'm sure it's a great squeegee, but it's not going to change your window cleaning career. It may save a little detailing here and there. And if you switch it up with different uh, handles, it may, you know, work a little better and, and slide and groove. But tools, you don't, don't put them on the back burner, but they're not the most important thing in your business. If you're an employee, maybe they are. But if you're a business owner, tools are not number one. Secondly, I would say, Austin, you need to connect with people in your area. You know, basically on all these forums, it's almost like a no-holds-barred um when people are fighting all the time and people see that you're in their area and it's kind of like a dog park, you know, everybody's just barking at each other and fighting. Let me tell you this. There are companies out there that want your work, obviously. There are companies out there that want to put you out of business. There are bad people out there. But a majority of the people that are in your area are just like you. They love the industry. They love waking up every day, making money for themselves, working for themselves. And if you see somebody at a gas station with a really nice soft wash rig or you see another Zero Pure in the back of their truck, go up and say hi. You don't have to have an hour-long Joe Rogan podcast talk with them at the gas station, but just give them your business card and say, hey... Uh, my name's such and such. I'm with such and such window cleaning. I'm also in the area. I don't know if you service this area or not, but I just wanted to come say hi. I love connecting with people in my area. If you ever need anything, give me a call. Uh, if you're further uh, out than me in your service area, I would love to send you work where I don't want to go, and you can send me work where you don't want to go. Let's just connect. Let's have a good time. Have a good lunch together or something. Not everybody wants to put you out of business. There's great people in the industry that are in your area. Connect with people. Another thing I would tell myself is sub out jobs you don't want. 
There are a lot of people out there that come across a job that they don't want to do or that they can't do because they don't have the equipment or the manpower. If you have that hot lead and you know a company that can do it, call that company, give them all the information, and sub it out so at least you're not just giving away that job to somebody else. You're getting a cut off of it. Say, hey, I'm not going to do this. You know, give me 10, 20%, whatever the case may be. At least you're making a little bit of money off of that hot lead. I've had so many jobs where I'm like, I'm not doing that. That's going to be too hard. It's going to be too difficult. I don't have the manpower. I don't have the equipment. And you just make no money off of it. If you connect with people in your area and you subcontract and you help each other out, I'm telling you, that relationship will go a long way. And speaking of relationships, I would tell myself, Austin, connect with your clients. The relationship between you and your client is not over when they accept the bid. A lot of times early in my business, I would just literally get the job. I would say, hey, you know, I'm here. Let me take the screens out. Let me start the windows. Do all the windows. You go inside. You barely talk to them. You get the check and you leave and you never see that customer again. Why? Because you guys never made a connection. I'm telling you, a lot of people ask, how do you get repeat customers? How do you get that customer on the schedule again? Talk to your clients. Like Steve-O said in a, uh, one of his videos, nobody cares about window cleaning, okay? Okay. Like, no one cares that you can fan on a pole. No one cares that you can do all this and do all that, and it's no detailing, and you're just the greatest window cleaner on the planet. These people don't care. They hired you to clean their windows, but if you can go in and you're doing a garage window and you see a nice Corvette and you talk to the homeowner about his Corvette for 20 minutes, or they have a German Shepherd and you also have a German Shepherd and you just talk about that, like, just... Connect with your clients because when they think of window cleaning, they just think of a company like you think of a plumber or an HVAC. You're going to call around and get five or ten bids, and whoever comes, that's great. But if you didn't build a connection with them, you might call somebody else next time. But guess what? If they know, like, oh, man, we should get our windows cleaned. It's been about a year or so. Let's, uh, let's call Bill. Bill was a cool guy. He did a really good job, and we got along. Connect with your clients. Another thing I would tell myself is do your research before you tell someone you can do something. It's embarrassing when you're on a job site and you tell some you tell your customer that you can do something and you find out that you can't. It's very very embarrassing. I remember the first time I ever came across a hard water stain. And I really didn't even know fully what I was doing with window cleaning. And they were like, hey, can you get this hard water off? And I was like, well, you know, I know Jersey talks about one restore a lot. And yeah, yeah, we can take it off. Let me just order some one restore and I'll throw it on there and it'll be gone. Yeah, we can do that. So we did the job, ordered the one restore, came in in like a week. Went back to that job, put it on there, and guess what? It didn't come off. Now, I wasn't lying to the customer, but I didn't know. I had no experience with hard water stain removal, and I thought that I seen a couple before and after pictures that it was just going to work. And guess what? It didn't. It looked embarrassing. Whatever you're doing, whether you have never done a roof wash before and now you got a soft wash system... You better do your research. You better call anybody you can in this industry if you don't know what you're doing to know what you're doing before you start that job. Another thing I would tell myself is do a walk around when you're done with the job. When the job is complete and you're putting in the paperwork and you send them the invoice and they're writing a check, just talk to them. Say, hey, you know, I got this house wash done. I got the windows done. Do you mind walking around just making sure everything looks okay? Because I'm telling you, I know after a five-hour day, you know, you've just been busting your balls and it's hard 
to you're tired, you want to go home. I'm telling you, it's a lot easier to fix something when you're there than if they call back next week and your schedule is full and you're running all over town and you have no time to come back. Now you've pissed that customer off. They're waiting six, seven, eight days for you to come back to touch up one little spot that you could have touched up while you were there if you did a walk around. I'm telling you, once you give the invoice, once you give the check, just say, hey, do you mind just walking around real quick, look at anything? If you see anything I need to fix, I'm here. I'll do it right now. Another thing I would tell younger Austin is ask the customer, what can we do better? There are so many companies out there that think they are the holy grail in the industry. And I'm here to tell you, you're human. You make mistakes, okay? So <clears throat> I, I always like to ask my customer when everything's done. Of course, I ask them if they're satisfied. I asked if we did everything okay. It, it, does everything look okay? But I always ask them, is there anything that we can do better? Is there anything we can improve on? And I'm telling you, they may not tell you everything. They may be really nice to you. They may not say anything. But even if they give you a couple of sentences saying, hey, I really would appreciate it if you didn't bring your bucket inside on my white carpet. Or, hey, I really appreciate it if you didn't park on my driveway. Just anything that can help better your company. Not only will you get that customer back and rescheduled, you can use that information that you got on the next customer, and you will slowly get better and better and better in your business. I'm telling you, it's a simple question at the end of the job, and most people won't tell you anything, but if you can get a little bit of insight from a customer's point of view, it will go a long way. And to kind of bunny hop off of that, reviews are so critical in your business. Just like you, you are a customer to somebody. So if you're a customer to Amazon or you're a customer to your local pizza shop or whatever, you're going before you do anything, you're going to ask for a review or you're going to look at reviews to see, hey, what do other people think about this place? Looking back now, if I would have started three years ago asking people, hey, is everything okay? Does it look good? Are you satisfied? And if they say yes to all those questions, ask a simple question. Hey, if you don't mind, take five minutes out of your day. Go give us a Google review. Give us a Facebook review. Anything. Because once you start getting into the hundreds, 100, 200, 300, five-star Google reviews, five-star Facebook reviews, then you really start building a really good business topped with guaranteed customer support. It will really, really help you out. A lot of people will choose you because of your reviews. There are so many people in my area that do such good work. They are great people. They love the industry. They do a really good job. But they struggle to get work because they have two or three reviews. And if you have two or three reviews and you get a bad review, your rating plummets. If you have 300 five-star reviews and you get a bad review, it really doesn't tip the system. Always, always, always ask for a review. Another thing I would say is a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but I think if you have a loyal customer, it is very hard to find loyal customers in this industry, uh, residential wise, you know, commercial, they really don't care. So they'll probably use you until the day you die. But residential, if you have a customer who's used you three, four, five, six times, Take the time out of your day to send them a gift card. If you've connected with them and you know they like Starbucks, send them a $50 gift card to Starbucks in the mail. It will amaze them. A lot of companies could care less about their customers, and if you could just show a little bit of appreciation for them using you so often, they will tell all of their friends and family about that. Or maybe you're doing their windows and it's the sixth time you've done their windows. Give them a free driveway. If it's a small cookie cutter driveway or a back porch or whatever, anything that will show them that you are grateful for their uh, service, for their, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? For them using you. Show them. 
Another thing I would tell myself is, Austin, please join a pro forum. Pro window cleaning is great. I know there's a lot of stuff on there that is not relevant, a lot of stuff you cannot use, a lot of uh, trolls. But if you have a sincere question and you put it in pro window cleaning or into the flow or wherever your forum is, you will get good quality answers from veterans. It's not going to happen all the time. Like I said, there's trolls, and a lot of people are really mad when they get on there and they don't get a good answer. But I'm telling you, it's worth a shot. It's worth getting an answer from other people who have done whatever you're asking the question for. And uh, another thing I would tell myself is get a business coach. Join IWCA or WCRA. Um, A lot of people don't like business coaches, and I'm telling you, a lot of business coaches are fake. They basically, I know a lot of business coaches that literally are only business coaches because they don't want to be in the industry anymore, but they still want to make money off of you, the consumer. And it's really embarrassing, and it sucks that there are bad people out there that give literally no information and have nothing to back it off of and are call themselves a business coach. But I, I know people that are in the Conquer group with Brandon Vaughn and uh, Joshua Latimer, and you can get paired up with companies that are the same size as you and do the same amount of money as you, and you can all spitball with each other, talk about taxes and your CPA and employees and all kinds of stuff. Get a business coach if you have the money. Uh, last two things. If you find a loyal hard-working employee. Treat them like gold. I'm telling you, in this industry, it is so hard to find an employee that's going to last longer than two weeks that wants to do this job in the hot weather, in the cold weather, working with all these kinds of conditions with heights and bleach or whatever. If you find an employee that wants to go hard for your company, keep them. Pay them. Make sure they know how appreciative you are for them showing up every day, especially if you're trying to get out of the field. I personally don't like it when people get out of the field, but if you're trying to get out of the field, treat your employees correctly. It will go a long way. Last thing I would say, get a CPA, dog. I'm telling you, CPAs do it every single day. That is their job to save you money on your taxes and to let you know what's write-offable and what's not write-offable. And I'm telling you, if you want to save money, you want to better your business, get a CPA. I know it costs money, but it will save you so much money, so much more money in the long run. But I want to say thank you so much to everybody that listened for today. This is Name Brand Radio. I hope to see you again soon. I've been trying to catch up with work since the honeymoon. I'm exhausted. I have a lot of work to catch up on. I'm going to keep trying to do one a week. But thank you so much. I'll see you next time. This is Name Brand Radio.